What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. If you guys have been following the channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I am a particularly big fan of the Ritchie Brothers auctions. I watch a lot of the auctions, therefore I know a lot of the prices, what things go for, and my main goal is just if I see something that I think is a good deal, I'll try to jump on it and snag it and uh, see if I can't uh, either use it or flip it and make a couple bucks on it. So, I bought something here that, uh, well... I hope I can make a couple bucks on. What is this thing? Well, the Ritchie Brothers website had it listed as a hydro demolition trailer. I don't know exactly what that entails, but uh, these two power units right here, I believe had uh, some sort of water pump connected to them at one point in time. There's a big poly tank up there. And, of course, we have a 20-foot sea can on the back. whole bunch of fuel tanks all the way around this thing. Unfortunately, I think they're all empty. It's also sitting on a 48-foot flat deck trailer, which appears to be in pretty decent shape. On the back side of the container here is these uh, ramp contraptions for some reason. I have no idea what those would have been used for but uh so i did not get a chance to look at this item in the preview of the auction uh, i really you know was not in the market for this thing by any stretch so the day of the auction i was watching everything go and this thing really didn't seem like it was pulling as much money as i thought it was worth so i ended up snagging it um i from flipping through all the pictures on richie brothers website though it does not show the inside of this container at all there's not one single picture inside of there so i have no idea what's in this box yet so i had my buddy sam from scrappy industries he was up there getting stuff he bought from the auction anyways so i just had him uh, slip on down here and drop this thing off for me the main reason i bought this whole contraption is because of these engines right here these are caterpillar c13 uh diesel engines these were put into a lot of trucks uh, these ones are obviously set up for stationary positions, but uh, they may still be good engines. This one here is missing a bunch of components. I'm just going to call that one a core for right now. I don't even know if it turns over or anything. To be fair, I don't know that either of them turn over. But uh, I'm hopeful about this one since it's all together. But let's climb up here and get a better look. Here's the other side of the unit. As you can see, they've got a man door right there going into that container. The windows appear to be covered up. I don't think you can even see through there. This engine, unfortunately, is missing the whole cooling pack. Oh, we got a battery tray down here. Couple batteries. Well, that's good. What's the, oh, five of 21? <clears throat> Those are probably still good batteries. Hope, got any diesel fuel in these? Oh, you can tell they're empty. Oh yeah. They siphoned those out. Oh, I got some really nice looking 11R225 tires on this, on this trailer here. The trailer itself seems to be in pretty good shape. A little bit of rust starting back here, but nothing serious. It's all just surface rust at the moment. A lot of times the suspension components will rot through. There's kind of like a dead area in here that collects moisture. And those will rot out. But they look pretty good. Look at the tons of meat left on the brake linings. Pretty good trailer, I think. They had to hack it up a little bit, and customize it to accept the container here. That's... Huh, yeah. It's got a container lock built into it, kind of interesting. Those ramps really intrigue me. I wonder if there's anything in this box. So here we are up on the deck. This is the complete Caterpillar C13. Like I said, bought this thing sight unseen. The website listed it as a uh, inoperable. They said there was no response when they turned the key, but the batteries were unhooked down there. So there's the dipstick. I don't see any signs of contamination in the oil. Looks to be a little over full. batteries were unhooked that we just looked at so i did throw the cables back on those 
I have no idea if there's any charge in them. Oh, look, a pair of ice grips. Look, we're coming out ahead already. Heck yeah, that's a nice size too. Perfect. So I don't know what any of this stuff is here. Maybe like, okay, yeah, filters. Some sort of big filters. So I don't know, those might be worth something. I'm sure if you had to buy them new, they're cost you a fortune, but. Look, we got inlet water pressure, low water tank level, pump oil pressure, pump oil high temp. 818 hours according to that meter. I don't know what any of this stuff means. I assume this all has something to do with uh, the oil industry, fracking or something like that. What I could see in the pictures on the website was this tag here. It says, good running engine C13 Acert. Well, that remains to be seen. So, like I said, I connected the batteries. I have no idea if there's any juice in them. Uh, we got some wires disconnected down here. I don't know what the deal is with that. We should reconnect those, maybe. This engine over here has been stripped down pretty extensively. Like I said, the whole cooling package is missing. Uh, intake piping, exhaust piping, all that stuff's missing. All the filters are off of it. Where's the dipstick? We'll pull the dipstick, see if it even has any oil left in it. Starter's gone. Bone dry on the oil. Yeah, we're probably going to call this one a core at best. I don't know much about these electronic engines, but I'm pretty sure that we can just plug into this computer and it will tell us everything there is to know about this engine. Uh, the last time it ran, what kind of fault codes, if any, it had, what kind of hours it has on it. And of course, the same thing for that one over there. So might have to borrow a computer from a buddy and see if we can't make that happen. In front of the engines here, we have another filter housing and this big poly tank here. I have no idea how many gallons this thing is. I'm gonna guess around six to 800, something like that. It's a pretty fair size, pretty easy to plug the numbers into a calculator and come up with that information here thousand gallons look at that it says right on there that's nice bone dry got float indicator in here and everything look at this thing If anybody has any idea what this whole thing was used for, or how it works, drop a comment down below and let me know, because I'm pretty darn curious at this point. The roof of this unit is all made up of uh, some nice diamond plate tread plate, so I'll pull that off and have it laying around. I'm going to strip this whole trailer apart, because I, I don't need it. All right, so I am super eager to hit the key on this uh, engine here and see if it's going to crank over or do anything for us. But uh, first, I'm, I'm even more curious is what's in that container over there. So let's get a hammer. There's, there's a lock on the door. There is a lock on the door, so let me get a hammer and break that lock off there. and Let's get into this thing. Time to find out what's in this thing. A couple swings from the hammer is all she wanted. Just looking at those ramps on the back of this thing, it definitely looks like there could be a Batmobile hidden in here, so cross your fingers. Let's pray there's a Batmobile in here. Well, I didn't think we'd actually get that lucky. No Batmobile, but uh, look at this. We got, uh, got like a mobile workshop kind of thing going on in here. Got some tool storage. Ooh, look at that. Roll of duct tape. I mean, we're like 95 cents ahead right now. Fittings. Toggle switches. The baterias. Looks like they've cleaned out most of the drawers here, unfortunately. Not much, not much left in here for tooling. Is there anything up on that upper shelf? 
<clears throat> Grindstone. A light bulb. Some cutoff wheels. Boy, I tell you, we're really, really making out on this unit. Really making out on this unit here. A couple of clapped out Craftsman toolboxes over here. Oh, we got a, a good bungee. I mean, that's worth something. Nothing up here. Dummy plugs. Nothing good in there either. I don't think anybody's cleaned these windows since like 1990. Those are pretty scudged up. Looks like somebody used the side of this thing for target practice. There's holes in this thing like Swiss cheese. Good Lord. I think they probably just had a whole bunch of stuff screwed to this thing over the years and that left a whole bunch of holes. Got our doors going on back here and there's a bunch of wiring. I wonder what that's about. Oh, look. Oh, there's a winch controller. Ooh, it works. Apparently there's winches somewhere. I bet you they have winches. Yeah, there's one on this side too. I bet you they have winches rigged up to let those ramps up and down. That's pretty cool. Oh, look, here's, here's the power. We got batteries right there rigged up for those winches. And then we got a, what, a fuel pump right here. Crank type fuel pump. Those are handy. Good barrel pump or something. This window's blocked over. Oh, we didn't check this locker yet either. Fingers crossed. Drum roll. What's behind door number two? Ugh, more nothingness. Well, the container's a bit of a bust. A little disappointed. I was hoping we'd find a Batmobile in there. Let's see about the old C-13 here, because that's probably the uh, most valuable thing on the trailer. I wanted to come check the coolant on this before we tried to crank it up or anything, and the cap is missing. But it is still full of coolant, so we got that going for us. I'm going to hook up these couple connectors that are still just hanging here. Oof, cut wires and everything. I don't know. Let's connect these things and see if anything happens. All right, so I don't know if there's any juice in those batteries at all, but I did connect them. Yeah, we get nothing out of the key. Hmm. Oh, there's a master switch down here. Let's see if that changes things any. Nothing. Nothing. Dang it. Let me get a volt tester and see if those batteries are even charged. All right, so we had power down at the batteries, but we weren't getting anything up here to the uh, the actual unit. So I got my jump pack set on 24 volts. I'm gonna connect this guy and see if we get any life out of it. Oh, yeah, I heard a, yeah, I think this is a fuel pump. It's clicking away now. Yeah, see that? So we get a spark out of that. So it's drawing some power. Let's go and see if we get any response out of this key. Oh yeah, look at that. We got a light lit up over here. What, we, what else? Oh, oh, things are happening. Is this thing just gonna crank right up? Cause that would be amazing. I guess it's uh, now or never. Contact. Oh, it tried, but I don't think the jump pack's got enough jam to make this happen. 
either that or that little paper tag lied to us and this thing's like locked up or something because I feel like it would at least spin over. Let me put a bar on this thing and see if it's going to turn. Oh, please let this thing make a full revolution. Oh, that ain't good. It. Oh. Did we get suckered at the auction? Oh, man. Holy crap. I can't move that thing at all. That doesn't seem good. I don't know, I'm a little impatient here, and I've been bumping the key a few times, and it just turned over a little bit further, so maybe it's possible we got some water into the engine somehow. I kind of don't see it happening from the exhaust, but I guess it's not impossible. It could be, if it gets water down into the cylinders at all, it'll hydro lock the engine. I don't think this thing's probably been sitting long enough to rust it up. making sounds that don't sound the best but they also don't sound awful See all right we got the jump pack hooked up the engine made a full revolution with the bar let's see if it'll do it with a starter contact why is it doing that oh oh did you guys hear that that thing hit hard. Well, that's the best we got yet. Contact. We might just need more juice. Uh, let me get some batteries rigged up on this thing and we're gonna have to do this legit. Well, I just took these batteries down to the shop because I thought they were dead. I was gonna try to save them and charge them because they're five of 21, they're not that old. And I get down there and load test them and they are load testing perfectly. So I couldn't, so I brought them back up here, did a little investigating and lo and behold, there's another master disconnect switch, which I hadn't noticed before. So perhaps that could be why we're not getting any juice. Uh huh. Now I got juice. That's better. Let's give this thing another go then, huh? Contact. She is still not happy. I don't understand what's going on here. I was going to break in with a little bit of commentary here. They say that hindsight is 2020, and uh, watching this clip back now as I edit it, I, it's blatantly obvious to me that it's uh, hydro locking, and I should have known better. And the best way to fix this or remedy this situation without taxing the starter and potentially bending a connecting rod or something is to uh, either pull the injectors or uh, float the valves and let it spin over for a while freely and uh, get all the water out before you do any harm. I don't know what difference it would make if this panel is even active or anything, but I just found this uh, three position switch here, engine mode, maintenance, start and run. Let's put it in the start there. That's the best we got yet. Let's uh, let this thing settle down a minute. See if anything improves after setting. If it's water in there, theoretically the water pressure could be bleeding down in the cylinders. You know, when you let it sit, any water could, any built up compression in the cylinders can kind of leak down a bit. At least that's what I'm hoping. All right, let's give this thing a go now. It really 
really seemed like it wanted to start there for a second. Oh, that's that's uh, that's exciting. I don't want to give this thing any ether. I don't know anything about these electronic engines if that can screw things up or what. so close i know i probably shouldn't but i just can't resist i'm gonna give it just a little teeny whiff of ether just the teeniest little just taste of it all right you guys ready contact <laughs> needs more. Oh, he just missed it. It takes a lot to get down through that giant filter in there and all the way into the intake. So what it seems like a lot to you guys probably might not be, or it is, I don't know. Contact. Dang it, this thing. Let's just give her the beans one more time and see what happens here. Starts and immediately shuts down like it's not getting any fuel. Hmm. All right, running at the limits of my knowledge on electronical engines, I, uh, I just hand primed the fuel system again, just to double check that we do have fuel pressure. The gauge is reading about 40 psi. So let's give her a whirl. Contact. <laughs> Well, that was encouraging. That was no ether. We're up to 48, 49 PSI. Give her another whirl. Something still sounds unhappy up there. Contact. The smoke is starting to look more diesel-y, so that's, that's good, I think. I don't know. I think maybe the computer's angry. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, let's try run mode just for the heck of it. I have no idea if any of that stuff is even doing anything, but let's give her a contact. Again, signs of encouragement followed by regret. Contact. Sounds better, maybe. Low RPM? I don't know. Is this thing even doing anything? No idea. After that crank in there, we're sitting at like 115 PSI fuel pressure. That's all the fuel pressure. I don't know if you can believe it or not, but the oil pressure's spiked way up there too. Maybe the system has to be on for it to read accurately. Yeah, that seems a lot, a lot more believable.
right, at this point, I'm out of my depths here. I don't know enough about these electronic engines to uh, make a good judgment call here. I'm going to put in a call to my buddy Sam over at Scrappy Industries. I know he knows quite a bit more about these electronic engines than I do. Maybe he's got the, uh, the doodad we can plug into this thing and see if the computer's angry at us. All right, well, we're back on the C13 here a few days later, and, man, it pays to have good friends that are uh, smarter than you. So my good buddy Sam over at Scrappy Industries, uh, he was out here picking up some other stuff, and I had him take a gander at this thing real quick because he knows a lot more about these electronic cats than I do. And he, uh, he gave her a good look over for about three minutes. He unscrewed this wire right here, and then... Uh, <laughs> Look at that. It pays to have smart friends. I understand I understand mechanical systems pretty well, but when it comes to the uh, the angry pixie wrangling, well, I'm really just not your guy. So, big thanks to Sam for coming over here and uh, unplugging that plug right there because apparently that was all we needed to get this thing going. So, that means I've got a good running C13 to sell here. I don't need it for anything, and yeah, that's why I bought it anyways, was hoping that I could get it running and sell it, so. So at this point, I've already got the poly tank up on the front there. It's sold, and now we know we've got one good running C13, and the other one's at least a good core, and uh, I just talked to my neighbor, and he wants to rent out the Connex box while he's uh, building a house down the road here, so I'm going to try to get this Connex box lifted off of there and carried on down to his place today. All right, well, we're up on top of the container here, or up on top of the trailer as a whole, I guess. And before we can remove the container from the trailer, we gotta knock these bolts off that are bolting this uh, makeshift roof to the container here. So it looks like we got six, six bolts and uh, should be good to go. Uh, like I figured, they must have nuts on the backside. Ah! All right, well, after inspecting the rusty remnants of the underside of these bolts inside the container, we're just going to go ahead and cut the heads off because it uh, seems easier. That'll do. All right, the only other thing we have to do before we can try to lift this thing off is they have these uh, quick turn locks in here. What, that hold on the container to the trailer. Basically that wedge shape at the top just needs to turn 90 degrees and then that'll allow the container to lift up off of it. So they have these half turn locks down here and I had to cut this plate off so that I could get to the lock and looking at the stuff inside of there I'm going to guess it hasn't been open for a while but if it's not seized up this should just twist right around here so we can open it and it looks like the handle is going to rust off and snap before I can get that thing turned so we might need some persuasion here There we go. She's ready to lift off now. All right, well, I got all those latches except for this one over here. 
This one is seized solid. I tried to just cut the uh, lever off down here, but I can't really get a grinder in there on it. And I don't feel like dragging a torch down here unless I absolutely have to. So I'm just gonna lift that up with a loader and see what happens. Maybe it'll just pop loose. Well, things got a little intense there for a second, but uh, nothing to panic about. We got her done. I had three things striking against me there. I know you can't tell on camera, but the ground kind of leans that way just a little bit. And then I had all, also the forks on the fork attachment were slid to the left, not centered on the, on the rack where they needed to be. And then I wasn't thinking about the extra weight of these aluminum ramps here at the end of the box either. Apparently these things weigh considerably more than I thought they did because as soon as I picked them, it wanted to lean that way. Plus, I might have even had low air in this front tire, I'm not sure. But anyways, we got her done. We didn't tear up anything. The box is fine. Let's go ahead and uh, I got to take these down to the building, whack those ramps off of there and uh, deliver this to the neighbor.
I'm getting ready to cut these ramps off of here, and I couldn't remember if I showed you guys this earlier in the video, but I figured out they have these things rigged up on a winch up there, and there's a handle right inside of here. And the batteries are even still in the box there, so you can just lower these down. So I can just go ahead and cut these and don't have to worry about them falling and hurting me. It is hot out here today boys great day to be running a torch but uh, I got the ramps cut off there finally got these big doors open for the first time throwing some light on the situation in here as you can see this box is uh, not exactly in stellar shape but uh, it's good enough for what I'm gonna do with it I thought about selling it at first because these 20 foot boxes usually bring anywhere from uh, three to four grand right now in the current market but uh, I think I'm going to actually keep this box and turn it into a fuel station, basically. I'm going to build the floor out into a containment and everything, put my fuel tanks in here, and that way, if we have a leak or something, it's all contained, and I can't get in trouble. As some of you know, that's how I got my name to start with here. But anyways, uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to take this thing down to the neighbor's place and let him rent it for a few months. Oof. A little bit of rot here. Nothing to worry about. I'm going to get these engines off of here. Added bonus is this upper platform is separate from these lower tubes, so I'll get to keep these nice big square tubes for uh, future fork pockets for something.
They got some tension on them suckers. Woo! With the exception of that oil tank underneath there everything is cut loose and just sitting on the trailer and it's kind of in the way where it's at so I'm gonna move it out of the way scrap the scrap sort out the, the wires and the hoses and stuff put that thing with the uh, the other couple and uh, I think after I get some pictures and list this thing for sale I'm gonna throw some of my uh, metal and materials left from the building onto this trailer just to get them up off the ground I don't know what was going on there. I charged the brake system after I connected the trailer and tried to go. I mean, I even gave it like a couple seconds. I didn't immediately try to go and the brakes just were not going. It seems like the, there's a there's an air tank in the back here right by the wheels, which is how you get your uh, air to your spring cans and your service brakes, you know, quickly. That way you're not run an air clear up from the tractor all the way back here you have a reservoir tank back here basically and it just seemed like it was taking forever to fill so i don't know if the line going from the tank to the tractor has some debris in it or what but uh, it was probably three or four minutes at least before those brakes charged enough to where i could release them but they did eventually release and uh towed it up here the service brakes seemed to work fine so that's all that really matters all right we finally got the wagon cleaned off here. That was a tall task. There's like a, a ton of little stuff that you kept thinking, well, that's only going to take me a second to clean all that stuff off. And a couple hours go by and you're like, man, there was a lot of stuff there. Lots of odds and ends and scrap. Lots of uh, hoses and cables and stuff for scrap. I got about 25 feet of uh, battery lead off of this thing. So that was nice. It's in good shape. I put that on a shelf for a rainy day as you can see the deck on this trailer is not in the best of shape it definitely needs a new deck before somebody could uh, put this thing back to work but all in all not a bad trailer that somebody could definitely put back to work a couple little rusty spots nothing too serious it's got some really nice rubber on it and if I don't get the money that I want for this thing which I haven't quite decided yet 
But if I don't get top dollar, that rubber's gonna come off and I've got some crappy rubber that I could throw on there to kick it down the road. This is also a heavy trailer. That other 48 foot flat deck that I have, uh, I can pick it up and move it around with Fat Alice pretty easy. This one, man, it, it did not even think about picking this thing up. And I know that Fat Alice will pick up 11,000 pounds. It's not happy about it, but it'll do it. And it would not pick this thing. So I don't know what it weighs exactly, but it's more than 11,000. Anyways, guys, don't mind my five head. I forgot my hat today. I know this is a bit of a different kind of video, but uh, I get people asking me all the time what I do with quite everything that I pick up at these auctions. So I figured this was a good one to show you guys exactly what I do. Sometimes I just flip it and resell it, try to make a couple bucks. And in this case, I broke it down into its components and I'm trying to sell it out that way as I believe that's the way it's gonna bring the most money. Now, if you guys happen to be interested in purchasing any of the stuff that you saw on this trailer here, Drop me an email, dieselcreek at gmail.com. But if you're actually looking to buy, put wanted to buy in the subject line of your email, and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. At the current moment, we have five fuel tanks available, four of them being those 150 gallon units and one 90 gallon unit that definitely needs cleaned out really good because they had waste fuel or oil or something in that smaller tank. Of course, we have the 53 foot flat deck here. As I said before, that Connex box is not for sale, but we do have one good running C13 power unit with 5,900 hours on it. And we also have a good core C13. So if you guys are interested in any of that stuff, like I said, dieselcreek at gmail.com, make sure you put wanted to buy in the subject line. I've also been getting a lot of requests from you guys to uh, do some more updates at the end of the videos, just kind of let you know what's going on around here. And there's always a lot going on around here, but I will try to start giving you one little nugget at the end of each video. And if you didn't already know, I always do a teaser at the end there uh, as to maybe an upcoming video, not necessarily the next video, but something coming in the future eventually. So anyways, your nugget for today is the old auto car constructor here. I don't know that I really talked about it in the past videos, but when I've hauled anything with this truck since I put it on the road, it is a gutless wonder i mean it's a wonder you can make it up a hill the thing doesn't have any power it's geared pretty low you only top out around like 55 or 60 going downhill and you're just glued to the floor the whole time so i'm going to be giving this thing a little more juice i've got a new cummins engine not a new one but a new to me cummins to replace this one with uh, it's a lot more horsepower so that'll be an upcoming video we're going to be going through the new engine making sure it's good to go before i put it in the truck i'm also going to be hopefully picking up a 13 speed to put in this thing giving me some more gearing going down the road after we get all the kinks worked out with the motor transmission swap i'm hopefully going to put a wet line kit on this thing for the low boy trailer i picked up a while back and we are going to be eventually painting this thing so that's that's your nugget for today but anyways, guys, that's all I've got for this one. So if you like this video, do me a big favor. Hit that thumbs up button down below. It really helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you guys a dime. If you would like to support the channel in a little more direct way, head on over to dieselcreek.com. Pick yourself up some sweet swag over there. We've got hats, t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, beer koozies, you name it, over there at the store. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is down below. Last but certainly not least, as always, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Later. Later.